What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. A lot of people already know this company. This company is predominantly known for making the Reload RTA. Lots of hype circulated around that whole RTA. Then the Manta RTA came out and people still to this day still talk about using the Reload RTA and it being one of the best RTAs that they've ever used. Before the Reload RTA, this company had made the Reload Dripper. Conveniently, con mm. Conveniently, conveniently, wow. Con well, that is a tough word to say. Conveniently enough, conveniently, woo, that is rough. I don't know why I can't say that word. Conveniently, there it is. Conveniently, I promise you I'm gonna get it. Conveniently enough, the same company that made the Reload RTA is the same company that made the Reload RDA say that you did a skip so you have to go fluid with it Jay you have to go fluid you have to make it one piece conveniently enough the name of the company that makes both of those devices is Reload Vapor. A lot of people thought that the original Reload RTA was made in America when in fact it was not. Now that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing that just means that the Reload RTA was made in China. There was some there was some type of email going around between him and a customer based out of Texas I think or California where they admittedly said that some of the parts are from China. I don't want to get into schematics of things or semantics or schematics. Schematics works and semantics works. Both of that works. Just because you have certain parts that are made here in America does not constitute that device to be made in America. For instance, if I just have the chimney that was milled in California and then the screws are from China, the top cap was from Korea, that's not American made even if it's assembled here. There's a certain requirement for so many pieces to actually be from the respective country. For instance, if that dripper could function without the part that they're saying that's made in America, i.e., uh, I don't remember what I just said, but the barrel, then in fact that's not made in America. The sole parts that cause the functionality to work by itself is what constant. I, I don't even know. I'm sure someone is going to comment down below citing laws. You know this is what's going to happen. Well, the law states that if there, there's no way that that's made in America. The screws are made in China. You should have seen me back in the 90s doing the robot up in the club. What? Dude, my shit was rusty. Who do you think played Tin Man in Wizard of Oz? I did. You just don't know it because I don't look that old. I have a magic potion that makes me look okay. Reload X RDA. And so without further ado, let's flip it. Reload Vapor USA color configuration up here in the corner and conveniently enough they put an X across it. I guess that's just saying this is going to be stainless steel. I don't know why you just wouldn't put a regular sticker on it. Really no information on this. On the flip side of this you have very, very fine print. Go ahead and give that a freeze frame for you. So let's see what's inside the package. Open it up. Inside the package, you're not really gonna get a lot. You're gonna get the dripper, which we will go over shortly, and you get this lovely little screwdriver. I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably one of the nicest screwdrivers that I've ever seen come inside of a kit. The only screwdriver I would say that would be nicer than the screwdriver that came with the reload is this guy right here. This actually came with the 528 Customs Squonk Mod. It's little things like this that, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me being corny. On the bottom of the package you're gonna get a peripheral pouch which is in that cheap Ziploc baggy style. Inside the peripheral pouch you're gonna get an Allen key, some extra post screws, a studded 510 pin because the 510 pin that is located inside of this is going to be squonk compatible. I'm not quite sure as to why a lot of companies are putting a squonk pin inside of the dripper by default. On the bottom of the dripper you're gonna have their logo which is basically cut in half and put into a pyramid type scenario. This is where the whole Illuminati thing it's coming in with a Reload X, which is why a lot of people, I presume, like this. Scared. 810 drip tip on the top is going to come out. This is going to be ultimate. Keep in mind that they do not give you another drip tip. All you get is the ultimate configuration. Half Moon goes right to the edge. Looks 
really, really good on there. Keeping in tradition with their original Reload RTA, they have these grooves cut into the top cap, and your airflow adjustment is going to be located right here on the side. You do not spin this part up here, you actually spin the ring. Just give that a good pull in, and then there is your O-ring and your airflow. Airflow is going to go down the barrel of the dripper, come in at a 90 degree, come up, and then there is your airflow. So it's going to be very difficult for you to get this to leak. The best thing that you could possibly do is take the juice that you usually use inside of your dripper, whether that be a fruit juice, whatever it is, be very, very careful on what you use to lube this up because it may cause a bit of a discrepancy in the flavor. And that little bit of juice that I did right there, it doesn't actually lock in place. You can continue to spin this. Ring ring. Hello. Ring ring. Hello. Ring ring. Hello. This is where your airflow is going to come in at on both sides. Go down this chamber here, go to the left or to the right, respectively speaking, and then come up and hit the coils. Positive and positive, negative, negative. If you really wanted to, you could do one large coil from here and here and try to get really good spacing on it. It's gonna have to be a fat daddy. I mean, we're talking big jammy style. Nine millimeter in a diameter has to be massive because if you just lay it in the center, your airflow is going to fly right on past it and not even hit the coil. This is going to be designed for a dual, and of course we have two Allen keys on both sides. Gold plated, of course. I don't know why companies are doing that. Positive block is actually cut into the deck, and if you look, there's their little logo right there. Um... Okay. Wow, uh, yeah, that sucks. Take a look at the screwdriver, it barely goes inside. It works, let's use the other one that I use. Yep, look at that, that's correct. See how much that goes in? Wow, that doesn't go in at all. Screwdriver sucks, asshole. There's not really much of a need to squonk in this. If you are gonna get this to leak, it's gonna be very difficult because as you squonk, you're gonna have to go up to where these ports are, then you have to essentially tilt it over and roll it because you have a lot of different angles going on. And then whenever you inhale air, it's just gonna recycle that juice back into the dripper. When you build this, you are going to need to pre-cut your legs as there isn't any room underneath for you to cut them after they've already been placed in. That is the Reload X RDA. Let's bring it on the top. So here we are back on the top of the Reload X RDA, sitting on top of the Rinko Jammy. What? Oh shit. We are working with .30 dual collision. Batifas. Am I got to lay on my ball? Show me on the Pacific and I got to lay on my ball with the ball. .30 dual collision. Zero dual coil. Let me show you some vapor production. Before you bitch about the fan, it's not 128 degrees where you're at right now watching me. It is for me. That's why my face is sweating and the top of my head. It's not just because I'm a big boy. All right. So if you don't like the way that the fan is, uh, what I'll do is I'll slow it down for you on the exhale just so you can see the type of vapor production. What would you do if my whole review, I talked just like this? There was no emotion in my voice. I never smiled, frowned upset it would be the worst type of review because you would never be able to read my face because it would never move wow really good flavor really good vapor production i know you couldn't see it and i'm not gonna apologize as you can hear there's a little bit i don't want to say whistle because to me a whistle's like
I'll tell you what, if my dripper did that, I would be vaping that shit till the drip tip melted. I would be jamming out. Do you hear it? It's got like a weird, it's not a whistle, it's not. Whether you put the coils higher up where the airflow is or you bring it down a little bit lower, either way you're gonna get some type of awkward noise. And I think that's because the way that the airflow is traveling. It's going through the top, down the side, to the right, up at the coils. Lots of different air travel in there. For those of you out there that think this is innovative the way that the airflow is, it has been done before. The Lynx by Digit Flavors, a great example, has some where it comes in from the side, goes down, and does some crazy shit. So it's not innovative in that way. But just because something's not innovative doesn't mean that it's not good. I don't have necessarily a problem with any of the flavor, any of the vapor production. I have a problem with the noise that it makes. Do you hear it? I feel like I'm killing a fish. For those of you that don't know what a fish sounds like when it's dying, it's exactly that. Whenever you have bottom airflow that's going to hit the coil on the bottom, not where the airflow is coming in at, it's going to give you an abundance amount of flavor. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing because there's a lot of drippers that are coming out where the airflow makes absolutely no sense. I saw a dripper recently where the airflow comes in at an angle, at an angle going up and it totally goes past where the fucking coil is. What? Ha, okay. That's not even indirect because it's going straight from the air slits and into your mouth. And the coil is recessed down. Why would you, why would you do that? What tells you that that's a good idea to do? That person should be fired tonight. It just makes a really, really awkward sound. I guess we'll call it turbulence, even though I don't feel that's what it is. It's just the airflow going all those angles and hitting everything. Now, do you hear it? It went more dull. It's about how much air you're bringing in and how that's traveling. You can tell the vapor production on this thing is amazing. I'm not quite understanding the deal with the O-ring on the top. I don't know why they wouldn't add just a little track so it locks all the way to the left open and locks all the way to the right closed or vice versa. It doesn't do that. You can continue to spin this. Now, when you first get this, taking this apart is going to be a little bit difficult. It's stiff. Don't be using no tools. If you start using tools, you're gonna chip your shit up and you're gonna be absolutely furious and livid that you used the tool to get the top cap off of this dripper that should have been a lot looser than what it is. But that's not really much of a flaw with the dripper design itself. It's just a flaw with the O-rings that they chose to use on the dripper. What's the price point of the Reload X, Bray? Oh, okay, all right, oh wow. The price point of this dripper I feel is a little too absurd. It's made in China, I understand that. Just like the Karma and that's more of a high end and that's 80 bucks. $70 is not acceptable, not for what this is. The dripper that I've coming out is made in America and the price point's gonna be $80, but it's made in America. You understand what I'm saying here? $80. So if people are gonna complain about the price point of the new RDA that I got coming out, then you have to complain about the price point of this. Cause $70, $75, or respectively speaking, those are real numbers, you can look them up. The price point may go down, but on the launch, you're asking 70 beans for this? Mm, I don't know, man, I don't know. So when you see the Gen RDA for 80 beans, don't be like, oh, it's so much money! If I was to rate it based off the price point and the rating of the dripper alone, it would be very, very conflicting. Just because on a rating, we have to factor in price point, although I never bring it up. Some people don't have that money. Some people, 70 bucks is all they make a month. They need to look at what job they have, because if you're working 40 hours a week and you're only getting paid 70 bucks, give me a call, figure it out. I'll have you come over here and mop the floor. You could do that two, three times a week. Do something, maybe clean, polish my shoes. There's a lot of other things you could do for the amount of money of $70 a month. 
I don't think that's the case, especially if people are vaping. The O-ring that's on the top for the airflow adjustment, although it's rubber, which is a good thing, and although it's rubber on the inside, that's another good thing for the drip tip. There's a lot of rubber O-rings, and I prefer that over silicone. That's not really what this dripper review is about. It's about the reload. I don't feel that $70 for a Chinese dripper is applicable, whether that be the Karma, whether that be the Goon, whether that be this. If something's coming out of China, I, let me just give you a rough estimation, okay? This dripper probably costs, we'll say eight to $13. I understand the company's gotta make money that manufactured it. So we'll jump it up to 15, 16 bucks, $3 a dripper. Or if you wanna bump it up five bucks, fine. Let's just go to 20. He pays for shipping for it to be shipped in the United States. So let's jack up the price by another five bucks. He has to make a profit. 15 to 20 bucks is what he should make, which puts this dripper somewhere right at 50. And that's pushing it. That is. I feel that that is taking a little bit advantage of people out there that are going to be interested in this just because people think that it's made in America. But I'm here to tell you it's not, guys. Again, it doesn't make China bad. It just makes the profit margin he's getting off of this thing absolutely ridiculous. If he's getting $30 on a dripper that's under 100 bucks, that's a pretty big pizza pie. I mean, that's... I want a slice of that pizza with the extra cheese. If I was to rate the drip on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it a six to a 6.5. I can't go anything more than that just because the price point is really, really bothering me with this. And it usually does not. I just don't feel at this point in the game that drippers coming out of China should be 70 or $80. That's ridiculous. The guy that designed this or made this or the company still has to make money. So you'll probably see it for anywhere between 30 to $40 which is right in the ballpark of what this should be. Maybe 50, I don't, I don't feel that it would be a total ripoff if this was 50 beans. Six, 6.5 and that's really pushing it. The whistle bothers me, the airflow control ring bothers me. Again, the whistle bothers me. Well, it's not the whistle, that noise that it makes bothers me. I like things that are very, very smooth and don't have a lot of noise coming out of them. I mean, that doesn't define a good dripper, but those are some traits that most drippers should have. NRTAs or anything you're vaping on. No one liked the old school mods where you had a MOSFET and a potentiometer and you heard the ticking. Nobody liked that. Nobody wants to hear their mod. As much as people think it's cool to hear your dripper working, no one wants someone to blow a fucking train whistle in your ear as you're vaping. I, I'm not saying this is as loud as a train whistle, but it's close. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jesus.